Hi everyone. You might have heard the saying that first impressions matter. So your potential employer, the first information, the piece of information that they will come across when you apply for a job is your CV or curriculum vitae or resume. Many words, the same thing, right? So what not to mention in your CV to improve your chances of getting accepted? And who am I to speak to you? I came across several of the CV. So many of the potential job seekers do contact me. And also, I mean, asking for positions in my lab, for example, for the PhD students, uh, you know, tons of emails. So where is the time for all the potential employers to scan through your tens of pages of the CV? So the tips include few uh, you know information are completely unnecessary never add these you know the following tips uh, you know the, the the words in your or information in your cv that can potentially backfire friends for example your religion there is no need of uh, mentioning your religion in your cv because that employment has it's nothing to do with your religion isn't it or caste or marital status i've come across many of the cvs mention that unmarried or married what does it to do with your uh, potential employment? So, you know, so these things are avenues of discrimination, friends. For example, the religion or caste, uh, the employer can discriminate against you based on your religion or caste. So, there is no point, even race, no need. Gender, why? Even if you're a transgender, there's no need to say that you're a transgender. What, what's the point of uh, mentioning your gender uh, just to increase the chance of uh, discrimination against you, isn't it? Date of birth. There is no need to mention date of birth. It's an old practice to mention the date of birth in the, the resume. Nowadays, it's completely gone out of fashion. And what is the point of having the date of birth in your CV? And, uh, you know, it can backfire you because, uh, you know, the age-based discrimination, uh, especially if you are, uh, uh, you know, extremely qualified beyond what the, the people, the society uh, can, uh, you know, expect from your date, uh, your age, you see. So then uh, there is no, I mean, uh, you know, it, it, it's not advantageous in your, you know, advantageous for your application, right? So what all you need to do to improve the chance of getting accepted, isn't it? That is your motive behind crafting a fantastic CV. So never mention your date of birth. And so many information are completely unnecessary. For example, your passport number, what is the point? I have seen many of the CVs mentioning the passport number author number here in the author number of course an identification number it's very dangerous to mention all these numbers in your cv because the employers uh, you know that the cv can go to the dustbin and people can simply come across your cv right they can abuse based on your uh, you know your uh, information the private information author number or even driving license number pan number you know, many people write the PAN number. Affiliation with political or ideological associations like union, student union. I was part of the student union. What's the point of writing all those things? Isn't it? Mailing address. There is no point in writing the mailing address. You know, most of the communications are online these days. And in case the, the employer would like to hire you, they will ask you for your complete mailing address. You know, so even the CV I have come across, uh, you know, a university faculty CV in which uh, he wrote his current salary. What's the point of mentioning all those salary in the CV? No need of for any of these things. And again, you might think that, okay, let me add a nice uh, headshot, you know, a profile headshot, the photograph. No, there is no need to write, uh, I mean, to add the photograph, the image in your CV. Uh, again, that increases chance of discrimination based on the looks. You might think that you look uh, professionally, you look fantastic, but you have no idea how the others judge because, you know, the aesthetics are highly subjective. So my advice is to remove a photograph, headshot from your CV. That is an old practice. No, no one does it these days. You know, and also don't mention your hobbies or interest. What's the point of uh, saying that you're a, a hobby cyclist or a hobby photographer? I like to watch the, you know, the, the sky, night sky. So that is my hobby or cooking is my hobby, singing. No need. Don't mention that. Reserve it for uh, friendly interactions with, uh, uh, you know, your uh, future uh, colleagues, right? Not for the CV. Please don't mention that. And also comprehensive employment history, uh, right from the date, from date to date in the tabular form. No need of all those things. So uh, what I prefer is to mention in a bullet form and also the relevant experience alone. So employment, which is relevant to the 
company which I'm applying for. Only that in a bullet point is exactly what is needed. You see, and mention the key responsibilities of the previous positions and what exactly you achieved in that position. That is what they would like to know. Right. And uh, describing about the employer, for example, I, I'm working in a uh, in a university which is NAC A grade and it has got a QS ranking or a uh, times higher education ranking of so and so. And the university has got so many of the Nobel Prize winners. What's the point? <laughs> you know, so uh, bragging about your employer or previous employer. Well, completely avoid it. You know, there is no need of it, right? The employers, the, the potential recruiters can look it up, right? About your employ, employer. So never mention anything about your employer. Uh, I mean, you can briefly mention which employer you work with. Other than that, description about the employer should be completely avoided. And also education history, every single grades that you got in your schools, all the way to the university, what's the point of that? Especially if you are a, a, a mid-career, you know, as you gain in experience, your academic profile uh, becomes diminishing, it's, it's become unnecessary, you see. So, uh, you know, the it, it matters less, the academic grades. Uh, for example, uh, a, a mid-career university faculty bragging about uh, uh, the person who got so, such and such uh, marks in uh, their school or university. You know, there is no point of that because if you mention that, if you, you know, that, that, that gives a very different, uh, uh, you know, different uh, uh, message. It conveys a different message that there is nothing else that, you know, the achievement that the person got around uh, for four decades back or two decades back is still the, the most significant achievement in his two page CV. So that gives, uh, it's, it's something called dilution effect. You know, it dilutes the rest of the achievement. So never do that, you know. So of course, if you are a fresher, then uh, uh, you, you might not have anything else to say. So fresher is absolutely fine to mention briefly how much you got, uh, if you have some significant achievements during your uh, college days, uh, university, that is perfectly fine. But if you are a, a, a mid-career, uh, you know, uh, person who is actually looking for further job improvement uh, and don't mention those experience matter more you know and also referees what's the point of mentioning complete referees that is basically a recommendation right the person who will provide recommendations for you so the referees uh, contact address including their mobile number and email never mention that in your cv and also many people write a cliche that uh, you know the uh, uh, the employer details will be provided on request so don't mention any of these things you know if the employer if the potential employer would like to know about your referees they will contact you directly after your initial shortlisting right so uh, yes the, the motive of your cv should be how to get past that initial screening stage Right. So for that, mentioning your referees in the CV is a big no, you know, and also don't mention, as I told you, references are available upon request. That is actually a cliche, right? And also there are several other cliches in the CV that is uh, common in uh, olden days, decades ago, but still the students use it these days, you know, for example, uh, a section called objectives, then uh, mission then vision all these things are highly unnecessary please avoid any of these visions and mission and objectives of your cv there is no need of any of these things highly obsolete terms and also uh, several of the terms never use in your cv that can potentially backfire for example strong work ethics so why you want to brag that you have strong work ethics you know or um, innovative no don't do that excellent communication skills <laughs> you know the why why should i say that my communication skills are excellent uh, you know so you instead use uh, uh, give the uh, employer a chance uh, for example a url the linkedin profile url where you put your uh, you know multimedia content that you generated like this youtube video so that gives an, a, a better impression these days you know we are now living in 21st century the space age so the, the kind of common practice in the last century uh, 20th century is no more applicable these days you see so don't do that and other uh, things the cliche like uh, i'm a team player you know or 
I'm detail oriented. Don't do that. There is no point in mentioning these, uh, you know, these these kind of uh, statements. And uh, you know, these are uh, the employers will grade you. They, they will judge you that you are a bragging person. You know, you are a bombastic communicator. Don't do that. Or I think out of the box. Another cliche. I hate that cliche. Out of the box thinking. Or go getter. <laughs> you know what? What does that term uh, says? Other than simply empty, uh, you know, empty word, right? Go getter. Don't use the, this cliche, right? And also beware of the uh, the dilution effect, which I told you that uh, mentioning this not so notable achievements or even uh, irrelevant achievements. For example, you you got a, a first prize in dance competition and you're applying as a PhD student. Uh, which is not relevant to the field that you are applying, you know, uh, and even outdated, very decades old accomplishment that is uh, that has completely lost the relevance. For example, TOEFL score, valid only for two years, and you got your TOEFL score uh, three decades ago. And what's the point of mentioning that score? Even if that you got a perfect hundred percentage in the TOEFL, there's no point in doing that, right? So it can make your CV less valuable because it will dilute your other significant achievement, you know, that's very important. So instead you should concentrate on strong, relevant achievements. So strong means what you really want to achieve uh, in, in your uh, CV, you know, because that, that, that should be aligning with the potential employer, right? So where you apply matters. So what are uh, the achievements that you want to showcase in your CV to that particular employer? That is what the, the relevant and strong achievements meant. Okay. And also don't mention the irrelevant uh, experience in your CV. That is one of the common mistakes that the students make. You know, so irrelevant experience. For example, you worked in a, a McDonald, for example, and you are applying for an entirely different. Of course, if you are applying to a KFC, your experience in a McDonald matters. But if you are applying to a university teacher, a faculty position, and why you want to mention those irrelevant experience in your CV, right? If you have long breaks, especially if you are a woman, uh, you might have some long break uh, uh, because of the uh, maternity concerns right or some health concern or whatever be if you have this kind of long career breaks that might backfire so what are the, the strategies to combat it so be prepared uh, to to justify you know uh, during the job interview in case you get shortlisted they might ask you why this long break of uh, one year or two year or three year so you know you can think of what could uh, what could be the the answer for example uh, you know, I came across through the Reddit. One of the, uh, you know, one of the good justifications that I've been supporting my bedridden grandmother, giving her end of the life care during this period. Yeah, that is ethical concern. So the employer can never judge you because of uh, what you did. You know, it is actually socially acceptable. So you can think of this kind of justification. You see, so that's really important. So I told you what not to. So what? To do in your CV instead of uh, uh, mentioning all those irrelevant things, right? What to do in your CV? So aim to have a very short CV, only two pages length. That is the standard CV that I recommend. My CV is on only two pages length. Right? Uh, you know, having such a long CV it makes no sense. Even if you have lots of public, I have seventy academic peer-reviewed publications. So should I mention every single thing? No, I just mentioned the, the top five. You know, and I provide a URL where employer can download the PDF of my entire 70 papers. So that is really important. Very, very small CV uh, to the point, brief and relevant. That is, uh, that's very, very important, you know, and be specific and quantifiable. Uh, the achievement, whatever the achievement that you uh, or accomplishment that you would like to say, it should be specific and quantifiable, you see. And uh, you, you see, you have to understand that employers get tons of CV and uh, they have severe attention uh, a short span you see that they have limitations with the time so just two pages that that should be perfectly fine and do 
proofread your CV and especially uh, statement of purpose that is SOP and cover letter everything the grammar and spelling everything should be uh, checked thoroughly you know so having this kind of obvious grammar mistakes in the submitted documents will convey a very bad picture of yourself you see uh, because the communication is integral to any job that you apply be it a university professor or a, a company executive communication is a central and essential fundamental to any job right so if you are making the grammar mistake in your cv or statement of even the cover letter uh, they it's highly unlikely that they will reply to your message you know so double check proofread thoroughly that's really important even if your phd is from an ivy league institute like harvard and you still don't know uh, the difference between it you know, ITS or IT apostrophe S, it is, right? So it's and it is, if you don't know the difference, then, uh, you know, if I'm the one shortlisting your CV, I will not be interested because that shows that you're not interested to learn to improve your English communications, uh, you know, style. Uh, if you're not open to learning anything new, uh, you think that oh i already know i have a phd from uh, you know uh, whatever be the institute princeton i'm a princeton phd holder and i don't need to improve my english grammar if you think that way then i don't need you simple as that so proofreading is extremely important and before going the final tip is personalize your cv where you are applying so personalization is extremely important, you know. Don't use a generic curriculum white or CV. You think that that can suffice, then you're wrong. Uh, you need to spend quality time on crafting the CV specific to the job that you're applying. If you do this simple stuff, you're better than almost 95% of the other candidate because they will use simple uh, generic CV, you know. So never use the same CV for every employer. So each application should have its own CV mentioning the relevant strong experience, you know. So those are the, uh, the, the main thing and also Personalize your cover letters to each employer that you contact to, you know, not just CV, but also the cover letter. So successful job applications take a lot of effort. Remember, do, uh, do remember that and be intentional with your application. You know, it's not a uh, just a cakewalk. If you think that way, you're mistaken. You know, it takes time and effort, you see, and those effort will be appreciated by your uh, employer potential employee if they want to hire you you know and also if you're applying for a creative position like an illustrator uh, of course illustration is uh, coming out to be a fantastic a lot of job opportunities are there in vector graphics isn't it so whatever be the content developer like this video that you are seeing through the youtube so uh, or a programmer you know if you are good at programming so if you want to or a researcher that you would like to showcase some of your works the peer-reviewed academic papers then do those sample in your application sample means a link where uh, the the potential employer can access your uh, creative output so for example your linkedin profile uh, url you can the short url of the linkedin you can mention in uh, your uh, you know in your resume so that the potential employer can go to your linkedin and then they can access your you know your uh, creative output the especially the multimedia output you know fantastic isn't it so that that's uh, that that works and to further improve your chance of application send a physical copy of your resume to the potential employer so that they will know that you're really interested in this position you're really passionate about it right not just by email but in addition you can send a physical copy of your resume but don't include uh, you know don't make it too big only two page resume would be just fine with a very nice uh, you know uh, brief but passionate cover letter that can uh, help you to uh, land in your dream job you know if you like these tips uh, i'm writing an uh, you know expanded version of these tips in my new book that you can see it here you know curiosity so the book will be out in uh, 
uh, next two months uh, i expect that so please have a look stay tuned in my youtube uh, channel as well as you can subscribe to my our mailing list the curiosity mailing list the, the google group is there the link is in the show notes so do subscribe uh, to know when exactly the book will be out so the book is all about the tips about the soft skills and uh, that also include comprehensively how to apply and how to ace an interview for example you know so all these tips are there in the book so stay tuned have a nice day. Bye-bye.